Welcome back. Have you experienced pain in your legs, swelling, skin discoloration? If so, it could be the sign of something serious. And Dr. Uh, Paul Vitulli and Megan Deacon Casey are both interventional radiologists with Duval uh, Vascular Center. So tell us, what is the, the venous insufficiency? Or, or what yeah. is that about? So chronic venous insufficiency is a very common circulatory disorder. Um, it involves the veins and the legs, as the name implies. The veins have a very important job in bringing blood back from the legs up to the heart and lungs. That's the normal way the blood should travel. Uh, when the blood pools in the legs, that's called stasis, and that can lead to numerous signs and symptoms related to chronic venous insufficiency. So what are, what, let's go over the symptoms. What are those for anybody out there who might be wondering if they have this? Yeah, there are a lot of symptoms that are associated with chronic venous insufficiency. If you can think about it, over 30 million people in the United States have venous insufficiency, and in Duval County alone, it's 177,000 people that have venous disease. Wow. So swelling is very common in the legs or in the ankles. You can get pain which sometimes gets relieved once you elevate your legs. You can get itchy, dry skin, cramping up your legs. Night cramps are a little bit more specific to venous insufficiency. Um, restless legs is a very, very common symptom as well, and you can start to notice skin changes after you've had venous insufficiency for a number of years, ulcers, wounds that won't heal, easy bruising, things like that. Wow. So who is it that gets affected by this? Um, it's very common in our society. Men and women are both commonly affected. Women are more commonly affected. It may be hormonal or related to previous pregnancies. Um, any patients with a family history of varicose veins, uh, anybody that has an occupation that requires lots of standing or sitting, such as nurses or school teachers, anybody with a history of blood clots. Well, I mean, it, obviously it sounds pretty common, and I think some I've experienced it when I fly. You may have experienced it as well, but so how, how do you prevent it? Yeah, there are many ways to prevent it, but the number one reason why folks get it is because of hereditary. So there may, may be some times when you can't necessarily prevent it, but if you have jobs where you're standing for a long time or sitting for prolonged periods of time, it's very, very important to take a little breaks. Studies have shown that if you um, even walk seven steps, only seven steps, it decreases the pressure in the veins from 100 to 20. So you can imagine just getting up, walking to the bathroom, that's just down the hall helps. Um, avoid high heels, um, oh. avoid tight clothing, um, avoid anything that's going to increase the intra-abdominal pressure. So certain exercises helps to improve it, such as walking, elliptical training, walking on the treadmill. But if you're doing lots of yoga or exercises where you're holding in your um, abdomen and your core really tight, if you already have venous insufficiency, it will make it worse. Oh, wow. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah. Compression well, stocking is another one that's really good for yeah. um, preventing it as well. Well, I'm feeling better about my coffee walks with Jared in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> now, at least seven steps. Um, so how is this diagnosed? How do you know? Like, yeah, so you know? the best way is a patient will give you a history that's pretty consistent with the disease. The patient will come to the doctor and say, at the end of the day, my legs just feel heavy or tired. I may have a lot of achiness at the end of the day that I can't relieve very easily. Some patients, like Dr. Casey mentions, have an itchy skin sensation that they notice that they can't really put, point their finger to, or a restless legs is another way. A physical exam, the doctor may see bulging varicose veins. They may see edema, which is a buildup of fluid or blood in the tissues, or there may be discoloration of the skin around the ankles. Mm. Ultrasound is commonly used to measure the size of the vein and also the direction of blood flow, which is important for diagnosis. So the good news is you guys have the treatment for this. That's right. <laughs> we do. Right, we do. So we screen pretty quickly with the ultrasound, as Dr. Vitulli mentioned, and we can treat. It's a very safe, easy procedure in the office. It's considered minimally invasive, um, where we actually prep your skin, use a little bit of lidocaine, so just needle sticks to give you that numbing solution, close the vein using um, endovenous thermal ablation, which is really energy, heat energy, energy that we're using to close the vein. Amazing. Put you in compression stocking you can get up and walk out the same day. Wow. Just minimal restrictions. Very yeah. cool. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thanks for having us. And Thank I'm, you. I'm, I know that just watching this, you might have a lot of questions. Uh, out there, you guys have an event coming up, right? Definitely, we do. It's actually this Friday at Duval Vascular Center downtown okay. from 3 to 6 o'clock. So come on down.